Greetings, Spirit Island fans. It's been a hot minute since I did one of these, so let's go green with the spread of rampant green. One of the older spirits of the island, though it was even more wild and exuberant these days than when it was young. Contrary to some stories, it does think things through. It's just far more concerned with the process of life than with things like consequences. It's not unfriendly to the Dahan, but its idea of a good time is to smother their buildings in all manner of inconvenient greenery, and its notion of help transforms carefully cultivated areas into overgrown thickets. Entire villages have been known to move to fresh planting sites years early if a spirit speaker suspects that rampant green is going to stay in the area for too long. I do love how the quote implies that Green is like an overenthusiastic toddler. Like, they're so excited to shove all the vines and roots into a place. While vital strength is emblematic of a healthy land, rampant Green is emblematic of overgrowth, shoving so much vegetation into a land that it's difficult for people to work it. It's easier for people to avoid a land that Green occupies than to try to work around them. It's entertaining to see a plant-based spirit shown as more of a nuisance than as essential to the land. I bet if Branch and Claw tokens were put in the base game, that green would have worked with the wild tokens. Now there isn't much lore for me to work with, so let's go on to the mechanics. And this is going to be a weird one, folks. You know how I get recommended starting turns for each spirit in these videos? Well, green is the biggest reason why those are recommendations and not rules. Certainly not the only reason, but the biggest one. Rampant green has several major advantages that seem to make them a favorite for high level players. Let's start with this card right here, Gift of Proliferation. It allows another spirit to place another presence. This, of course, allows your friends to turbocharge their progression. More energy income, more card plays, more spots on the board. This would be an above average minor power, a below average major power, and an amazing starter card, as you can get that insanity rolling from turn one. This can kickstart any spirit, making green one of the best supports. But we are not done yet, folks, because next we have Overgrow and a Knight. Not content with giving other spirits more presence, but Green can slap down an extra presence of their own. And if you get to a point where you don't want to place more presence, and yes, you can get to that point with Green, we haven't even gotten to the growth options yet, then you can still use this card to generate three fear. A decent amount for a single outing. Their other two cards aren't as amazing, but they are nice in their own ways. Fields choked with growth can allow you to push a town or two to Han, giving you some more options there. I'll get to the last card later. Green's growth options are wonderful too. Regardless of what you pick, you always place a presence in a jungle or a wetland, so you're going to have good control over those spaces. Their reclaim lets the player get an extra power. They can put down yet another presence with an additional card play, always lovely to fill out those thresholds. And with that option, if you include the power card, from the get-go, Green can place three presents on the board in a single turn. Okay, maybe not from the get-go, because they still can't afford that power on turn one, but still! And they can gain a power along with three extra energy, and since their energy gain is kinda bad, you might want to use it a few times. So decent growth options by themselves, but combined with the powers? Kinda nuts though. There is that possibility of three presents in one round without any kind of help, an extra card play, which is always amazing for a bit of extra awesome, and a good amount of power cards for you to use. But it's that presence game that is real important here. And to illustrate that, let's jump to the special rules. Both of them work with presence. First, Choke the Land with Green allows the green player to prevent a build or a ravage from a land with green sacred sites, as long as they sacrifice the presence to do so. This can, of course, be very effective in shutting down invaders, as they can't blight your land, or won't be able to grow to be a threat in the first place. Granted, preventing builds means fewer things to blow up, which means less fear in the long run, and preventing ravages can mean no Dahan reprisal, and thus no fear from that. So you will need to be thoughtful on how you go about this if you want to get a fear engine going. But if you are about to lose a presence from a ravage anyways, you might as well prevent a blight while you're at it. And then there is Steady Regeneration, which allows the green player to place presence that has already been destroyed, instead of the presence on the tracks. This means that, yeah, you're not really inconvenienced by blowing up your sacred sites, since you can easily get your presence back. 
taking from your dead presents will not advance their tracks, so you will still need to keep those up, but you need not fear the death of the green. Two caveats, though. You can do it for free if the island is healthy, but if the island is blighted, you will need to pay an energy in order to place a dead presence. This means that at some point you will need to figure out if you are going to blight, and if so, if you would prefer to take from the dead presence. Again, green doesn't have a good energy gain, so doing this with a blighted island can get expensive. Second, it very specifically says adding to the board via growth, not every time you place a presence. This means that Overgrow is not going to use Dead Presence, nor is any other card that places Presence, unless it already uses Dead Presence. This means that you are a bit limited as to where your Presence goes, as you can place in Wetlands and Jungles easy, but if you want to place in Sands or the Mountains, then you will need to use that particular growth option for it. So your Mountains and Sands are not going to be as well defended as your Jungles and Wetlands. You will end up in an ocean-like scenario where you will easily clear out your Sphere of Influence, but entering beyond that is a little harder. Certainly not to the extent of Ocean, but the analogy works. Now at this point you might be asking, okay, but where's the damage? How am I going to destroy things? Well, that's kind of the weakness of Green there. They're not very great at breaking things. Green has options to defend or deal damage, but they aren't great. Their final card, Stem the Flow of Fresh Water, is a slow power that needs to be cast from a sacred site and only does one damage to a building, or one damage to each building if cast on a mountain or sand. Three reasons say it's not great. The slowness, the sacred site, and the pitiful damage that will be guaranteed to not be sufficient to destroy the buildings by itself. That card needs help, so it's a good thing that you can bolster that with Green's Innate. Creepers tear into mortar. Fill the first threshold and you can deal one damage to a building in a land that you occupy. One damage. One. But you can repeat this power up to two more times with the thresholds for a total of three damage spread across however many buildings you please. Heck, with how it's worded, it doesn't even need to be in the same land. You can nickel your dime buildings in two different time zones if you want. Or you can use all three to take down one city. All you need to do is provide three moon and four plants. But all your cards have plants, and your presence tracks can give you two for free. So you just need to worry about Moon. And of course, Stem the Flow can provide more damage, and it doesn't provide Moon. So your one damage card doesn't power up your damage innate. Okay. Only two of your cards provide Moon, so you'll need to look for more if you want that third threshold. But yeah, that's your only direct damage. And you will note, none of it targets explorers, only towns and cities. So you won't be able to do much with all the little soldiers running around, but you can wreck their homes, however slowly. But if you're serious about doing damage, you might want to look into major powers. And this would be the big issue here. Because they're not blowing stuff up or protecting Dahan, they're not really going to be fun for a new player or an aggressive player. New players will probably bounce hard off of green, since while green can slow invader progress, they won't really do much in cleaning up the bad guys or making fear, both of which kinda need to happen in order to win, and the invaders can win by timeout, so stalling is not going to be a popular move. Veteran players with a good understanding of the game's pace, though, will find green very effective at shutting down problem spots and splitting up damage to combo with area attacks. This is very much a spirit for experienced players, is what I'm saying. And of course, we have green's other innate, all enveloping green, which can provide a Defend 2, a Defend 4, or a Defend 4 and a Blight Removal. Not a huge defense. Level 1 will only be enough to block a land with one Explorer in one town, and Defend 4 is going to be enough to defend against a city and an Explorer, but not much further. Still, it's nice, though you will need Water for the first two thresholds and Earth for the third. And unfortunately, Green doesn't start with Earth, so you will need to find some if you want that Blight heal. That is quite a bit of effort to accomplish something that Vital Strength can do with one card. Now, for optimal first turns... I got nothing. There is enough going on with Green that I can't really pick any kind of best turn for them. Do you focus on Green's own spread, or do you assist with your friend's growth? Do you block builds from turn 1, or do you spread around first? Which spirits do you help out first? Well, I can give advice for Majors, though it isn't like it's anything unexpected. You have a lot of plants already, with a total of 6 coming from both cards and presence track. 
so you are more than likely covered in that regard. If you want to make best use of the innates, then you will want cards to provide moon and water, with a little bit of earth if you're going for that last threshold for all enveloping green. And of course, any major that makes heavy use of plant in its threshold is going to be a gimme. It might be a good idea also to grab some damaging powers or heavy defense powers if you need to really take on those invaders and your friends aren't doing enough. Otherwise, due to the low energy income and high card playability, you will find that you will be playing minor powers a lot, unless you spam the third growth option a lot. Which, considering that you will place presence every turn, is a possibility. Again, green will need good destructive capabilities and something that can help with sand and mountains, as well as something that can help with explorers since they can't target them specifically. But green can easily stop the invaders from getting a strong foothold, and thus your foes will be weaker and less able to deal with you. And I believe that is everything, so I guess I'll take my leave. Take care, friends. Let's do this! <laughs> you ever have one of those days where you're in a weirdly good mood? Like, to the point where you probably come across as annoying to other people? I'm having one of those days. <laughs> and defend floor. My god, why am I having a trouble with Defend 4?